Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about Nissan's Xtroid CVT, which Nissan claims is the first CVT to be used in a rear-wheel drive high-torque production vehicle. And so this is a toroidal CVT. We're going to get into how it works and what specific things Nissan has done with it to allow for a high torque application. Generally steel belt driven CVTs, which you find in a lot of vehicles out there today, uh, cannot handle super high torque inputs, uh, but Nissan has a solution for it. So that's what we are going to get into in this video. So the first thing we need to understand is what is a toroidal CVT? Toro, idle, toroidal, toroidal. Everyone say it together, toroidal. Troy, Troy, anyways, it's not important. Toroidal CVT. So what is a toroidal CVT? And it's actually pretty simple. So it looks complicated right here just looking at it. Uh, but there's four main parts that we're going to be focusing on. And so you have an input disc. This is coming from the engine and it's basically this spinning conical disc. So you can think of it uh, just like a spinning disc right here. And then the radius of that disc gets smaller and smaller as you come down. Then you have these power rollers. So these are also spinning discs that are coming into contact with this input disc. And so if this input disc is spinning this direction, then this power roller right here is gonna be spinning upward like so, very simple. So that's your input disc and then you have your output disc. And so you spin around this input disc, that forces these power rollers to rotate and then those power rollers are in contact with the output disc which looks just like the input disc it's just spinning the other direction uh, because you forced it to change that rotation and then that is your output and so that is all you know the mechanism is itself so you've got your input hits these power rollers spins the other direction on your output disc and so this is the mechanism that is used to change the gears. And you change those gears by pivoting these power rollers. And so the example we have here shown with these two power rollers uh, in their vertical position right there, they haven't rotated at all, that's about a one-to-one -one gear ratio. So a lot like being in fourth gear uh, in a manual transmission vehicle. And then if you want to change that gear ratio, you pivot these power rollers. So here we have a high torque or a low gear example. So here is your input disc and it is spinning this direction like so. And then it's in contact with these power rollers which have pivoted down. And because they've pivoted down, the radius that the input disc is rotating is very small, but the radius that the output disc is rotating is very large. And so that means your engine is gonna be spinning very fast in order to make this uh, move not that quickly. And so here's basically what that ratio looks like. You've got the contact with that upper input disc against those power rollers, which is very small. You've got the contact with the lower output disc, which is very large. And so your effective gear ratio, you've got your engine spinning this small a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of times around, and this only rotates once. So for example, maybe like a four to one ratio, the engine will spin four times like so, and the output will only spin once. That's a lot like a first gear in a manual transmission. You're gonna have good wheel torque. Then when you get up into higher vehicle speeds, uh, you of course need to decrease that gear ratio so that you can reach those higher vehicle speeds. And so what you do is you pivot those uh, rollers up. So your ratio is decreasing as these rollers pivot up. And so once they pivot up here, you can see your effective gear ratio that radius at which you're rotating the engine is very large. The radius at which you're rotating the output, that uh, transmission, is very small. And so because of that, your engine will spin once and your transmission will spin a bunch of times. So, you know, maybe 0.25 to 1. This is uh, higher than you would, or lower than you would typically see in an engine. But for example, this is going to be a similar scenario, what you're looking at right here, to a tall gear, perhaps a sixth gear in a manual transmission. And so all you're doing is just changing the angle of those rollers uh, and that's changing the radius that you're supplying that torque. You've got that contact on contact on contact and you force those things to all spin. And so that's all you're changing is the angle of that roller coming up against where it's coming up against that input disc and that effectively will be changing your gear ratio. All right, so now that we understand the basics of how a toroidal CVT works, let's get into how it actually changes the angle of these power rollers in order to enable different gear ratios. So the mechanism for gear changes. And the way this is done is by vertically moving a trunnion, which is what these power rollers are mounted onto. So you may think, okay, you've got an actuator that simply rotates this. That's not actually how it works. So if we're looking at uh, this right here, we're looking at, here's our input disc, here's our power roller like so, now the angle right here, we're simply taking this and now we're looking at it from this direction. So we're looking at it like that 
In other words, from here, now looking at it like this. And so as this input disc spins, you have these power rollers which are mounted on trunnions. And these trunnions can move up and down. And so that's a lot like this power roller right here, just moving into or out of the whiteboard. And the way they move it up and down is using these little hydraulic pistons. So you can supply pressure, force the whole thing down, supply pressure, force the whole thing up. So now you're wondering, okay, why does moving this thing up and down change its angle? Because all we're doing is we're taking this and moving it like this. We're not actually pivoting it yet. And so the reason why, actually it's the input disc that is forcing it to change its angle. And so how that works, if you're looking at this disc, uh, here we have you know where it's perfectly lined up right in the center. Well, the only force on that power roller is going to be vertical. It's gonna be hitting it because it's lined up directly because the center of the power roller is in line with the center of the input disc, then the only force acting on it is vertical. So if you think about this spinning disc right here and I hit my finger right there, it's gonna force my finger up. If I hit it right here, it's gonna force my finger that direction. If I hit it right here, it's gonna force my finger down wherever you hit it. So the only force acting on it when that disc is centered with the input disc is directly up. So it's gonna spin and it's a lot like you're in fourth gear or a one-to-one -one ratio like we showed at the beginning of the video. Now what happens if you move this vertically? So we're gonna use this hydraulic pressure to move this trunnion down. So that means relative uh, to the input disc, which remains stationary, we move this power roller down. And so by moving it down, now we've changed the location of the contact. So the contact is no longer directly in line with the center. Instead of it being right here, we have that force pushing directly up. Now we've moved our contact down a little bit. So if we you know, were to throw my finger at this spinning disc right here, it would push it out this direction. And so that's what happens. You move that power roller down and now the force acting on it is pushing it this way. So it has you know, a force in this direction and it has a force in the vertical direction. And so because of that, because you have a force acting this way and this way, not only is it going to spin uh, because of the input disc, but it's also going to be forced to move out. And so as it's spinning with that input disc, it's also going to lean forward. And that's because you moved it down. So you're using the input disc to actually change the gear ratio by moving it vertically. So you drop it down, the force now causes it to press outwards, and now you have changed that gear ratio, much like in this high-speed scenario. So you forced it back, and now it's the top of it is resting near the outside of this input disc, and now you have a taller gear ratio. If you do the opposite, the opposite occurs. So if you were to move it up, then it would force the inside of that to move in because the force acting on it would now be going this direction. So you'd have a horizontal force and a vertical force. So it'd be forcing it to spin as well as forcing it in, and that would be giving you your high torque application. So reducing or increasing the gear ratio so that you increase your torque. Now you may be wondering how much movement is actually required in order to change gear ratios. And it's really not that much at all. It can be as little as a tenth of a millimeter to as much as a millimeter, where you're gonna move these up or down and that will be enough for a significant gear ratio change. And so you have a very quick response because you don't need to move these hardly at all and you get a significant gear ratio change. And you also will notice that these hydraulic lines here are move in opposite directions. So when one of these moves up, the other moves down and that forces them to move in or out together so that you change that gear ratio together as we've seen here earlier on in the video. All right, so now let's look at the power flow through the entire transmission and then also get into how it is able to handle more torque. And so here's an overall layout of the full transmission. So you've got your engine, which will be over here. That's gonna be sending torque through a torque converter, which will be then spinning this input shaft right here. So you've got an oil pump for the transmission and then you also have a reverse gear mechanism, which is able to change the direction of this input shaft right here. And so here's your input shaft and it actually goes all the way across and these output discs are actually on bearings, so they're spinning over top of that input shaft, and that input shaft is spinning two separate input discs. And so instead of just using one uh, you know, input disc for the CVT, which you could do, uh, they've got two of them, and this dramatically reduces the forces going through it because now you're sending all of that torque through two CVTs rather than, than just through a single one. So it goes across to these two CVTs, and, or these input discs, 
hits these power rollers right here and then rotates these output disks. And so these power rollers will work in unison uh, in order to have the correct matched gear for this output disk. And then that output disk is made it up to a gear, which then you've got this lay shaft right here. That's spinning your transmission output, which will then go to your differential powering uh, the vehicle. So, you know, the, the beauty here is that you're, you're multiplying the number of points which have a force going through them, and by doing so, you're reducing that force that's actually going through them. Nissan says the force applied to these power rollers is the equivalent of three tons. That's a three ton force going through these power rollers, and they can handle up to 10 tons. So it's a very hard steel uh, that they're using, and it's able to put a tremendous force through it uh, and still you know, not have concerns about durability. Uh, it'll actually function and work just fine. So neat how they're able to do this and package this. Uh, you know, it is actually fairly simple just looking at it. There's not all that many moving parts you know, relative to other forms of transmissions. So it is a cool setup here that they've got for this toroidal CVT. All right, so to cap it all off, they've done something very cool and they've developed a unique oil for this style transmission that allows for these high torque applications without a ton of wear. And so what they've done is they've created this specific oil that has these molecules, uh, which as you can see here, free floating, you know, it's just kind of some messed around molecules. Uh, but the way that they are formed, they have these little, uh, you know, attachments to them on the molecules that make them kind of line up when you apply pressure to them. So when you apply pressure and you have this oil flowing between two metal components, you know, if this was just purely metal, metal on metal contact, this thing would wear out very quickly because metal on metal gets very hot and then it wears out. So you of course have to have a lubricant in between, uh, but it's hard to transmit torque through a lubricant. So this specific lubricant that Nissan developed helps do that. And so the way it works is you have these individual pieces and as you apply pressure to them, they all line up together. And so then you have this nice, uh, lubricant which is actually providing you know cooling and lubrication of course and it's not allowing that metal on metal contact however it's still allowing for that torque transfer from your input disc to your power roller or from your power roller to your output disc so a very clever oil system that they helped create uh, that's able to interlock and line up and transmit a high amount of torque all within uh, you know just the oil itself that's still providing lubrication and cooling to the transmission Super neat stuff. Now, what vehicles has this transmission been used in? Well, it was actually used in the Nissan Cedric, which had a three liter turbocharged V6 and was rear wheel drive. So it was a high torque, powerful engine using this in rear wheel drive. And that was in 1999. Yes, this has been in a production vehicle since 1999. So pretty neat device. Uh, you know, when you hear about, you can't have high torque CVTs, Nissan's been doing it for about two decades now. So that's quite cool uh, with this style, this Nissan Extroid CVT. Bucket, how do you feel about Extroid CVTs? Pretty cool or not that cool? Bucket says, check out Extroid CVTs, they're awesome. I'll include links to some other videos if you guys are interested all about CVTs. Thanks for watching.